Thank you to Read Revolution for sponsoring this video. Stick around for a special deal. How many PDFs have you bought and forgotten about in your downloads folder? Today, I'll talk about a memorable book that I keep going back to. I'm Derek, and welcome to Sax Spy, where I uncover the best vintage and modern saxophone gear, Vinti and Minty, and welcome to my new studio setup. I shifted things around a little bit, uh, thought I'd get a better angle here, but I've also upgraded a lot of the equipment that I'm using. I know a lot of you are doing more online lessons and live streaming and creating videos. And so in a future video, I'm going to talk about everything from the camera that I use down to all of the little screws that you might forget about. So make sure to look out for that in the future. Today, I wanted to talk about one of my favorite books, which came out in November of 2018, and that is 20 Approach Note Etudes by Chad LB. Essentially, this is a collection of written out solos and etudes over common jazz standards, but it really focuses heavily on approach notes and enclosures. This was actually one of Chad's first books that he released, and since then he's done a ton under the name Jazz Lesson Videos, but this one's actually pretty short. It's uh, only 22 pages, as you can see, and if we were to compare that against one of his other books, such as Scales for Jazz Improvisation, this one is 444 pages. Uh, it's quite a big difference. but. More often than not, I'm actually reaching for this one instead, and I really want to show you why. I was fortunate enough to study with Chad for about three years, and it's really interesting to see a lot of the material that we studied in lessons become fleshed out books, uh, like this one, for example. One of the things that he did is he would have us write etudes over the progressions that we were working on. So for example, uh, I was working on the last eight bars of There Will Never Be Another You, and I wrote some of the notes, he wrote some of the notes, and we ended up with this PDF. So let me just show you a little bit of what that looked like. You can see that uh, this etude uses a lot of strict harmonic language. Uh, we aren't using any outside or crazy substitutions. And the 20 Approach Note Etudes book is that same way. It focuses mostly on bebop language, on the approach notes and enclosures, um, and it doesn't have any outside language like that. <laughs> Probably the most outside language we'll get in this book are some altered dominant chords, but again, that's still pretty harmonic. Now, the way that this book works is we do have 20 different etudes over 20 different jazz standards, and these are actually contrafacts, which is a new melody over an existing progression. And some of the names reference these standards, but they never actually explicitly say which standards they belong to. So if you're new to all of these, you might have some trouble finding the real one. So here's a key of all of the contrafacts and the tune that it was based on as far as I can tell. For example, the first one, All the Things You Could Be, is based on All the Things You Are, Bella by Moonlight, Stella by Starlight, My Glistening Hour, My Shining Hour, On Red Whale Street, On Green Dolphin Street, so on and so forth. So you can see how similar those are. Now when you go to buy this, there's a couple different options. Sometimes these books, you can buy them in treble or bass clef, but with these, they are actually transposed so that they match the original keys pretty well. I would recommend getting the B-flat version, and this one is for tenor saxophone, and it's the one that I believe Chad wrote in because the, the ranges are really nice. They fit really well onto the saxophone. There is also a B-flat version for trumpet where the range Ranges are adjusted, an E flat version, which I also picked up because I wanted to play it on alto, a C version, and a bass clef version. But for today, I'm mostly going to go over the differences between the B flat and E flat versions, uh, which are most relevant to saxophone. So when you buy this, it comes in a zip folder, so you get the PDF in the key that you chose, as well as some M4A recordings of Chad playing these standards a cappella. So you can listen to them, you can check out the articulation that he uses, uh, study them, listen to them, even transcribe them if you want. You don't even have to use the book. But but that's what you get. So I wanted to touch upon some of the more detailed aspects about this book. And the first one that comes to mind is the engraving style. This one is written without any articulations. And I actually really appreciate that. It makes it easier to read. And it was actually released alongside a YouTube video that Chad did that talked about articulation, more specifically the Duden articulation. And the Duden articulation, or ghost tonguing as I knew it, was one of the first things that Chad worked on with me in private lessons, which sounds like this. <laughs> What I like about this book is that it has four bars or measures per line, which helps me keep track of where I'm at in the song as I'm playing along with it. And this is actually a quality that uh, exists in the Charlie Parker Omni book as well. 
Now, when you combine the lack of articulations and the four bars per line, it's that omnibook style. And I think that really contributes to why all of our omnibooks look like this. Covers missing, page torn, we've just played, you know, played them like crazy. While our uh, Cannibal Adderley books look new like this, because they don't follow that rule. There's shifts, there's articulations. It's just really hard to read. It's a mess. And I would much rather read the omnibook any day. As far as chord symbols go, he uses the written out letter. So C, M, A, J, 7 for C major 7 or C little m 7 for C minor 7, as opposed to either the tiny triangle or the minus symbol, which isn't a huge deal. Uh, but I really appreciate that those are on top of every bar so that you can know what the harmony is that you're playing on top of and find some of those guide tones that you're, you're aiming at. One of the main differences between the B flat tenor version and the E flat version is the range. And I really think this is important and part of why the tenor version is optimized. The tenor version sits at a range of a low C up to a high F uh, and most comfortably it's usually a D to an E. But for the E flat version, um, usually it sits a little bit higher and due to some errors, it's actually written down to a low G sharp up to an altissimo G sharp. So it's got a wider range. And most songs have a wider range in general as well. So I would say that the tenor version is a little bit easier to play. And I would consider getting it even if you're an alto player, just because of the way it sits on the instrument. For key signatures, the tenor sits comfortably at three flats to three sharps, whereas the alto goes from two flats up to four sharps. Now the tempos in this book go from a 130 medium swing up to an upswing of about 240. And you can actually play most of these at any tempo in between those. But if you want to play along with the recordings, that's kind of where you're sitting at. The average tempo for most of this book is about 180. I say this book is more for like advanced high school players to college players because each exercise is about a minute long if you can get through it at those tempos. Uh, it would actually be a really great warm up for more advanced players. The rhythmic concept of this book is mostly moving eighth note lines. So you're not gonna see anything that's really double time or anything that's like super triplet based. Now out of respect to Chad, I'm not actually gonna show you any of these full etudes, but I do want to play some of them for you. And I wanted to do that on tenor in the B flat version, on alto, in the E flat version and on Ewe in the B flat version, um, just to show you that this is a valuable practice tool for all of those instruments. And I've actually really been enjoying working on my Ewe technique going through some of these exercises. <laughs> Thank you. 
want to let you know about the special deal from today's sponsor, Read Revolution. Read Revolution is an online read shop that gives you the freedom to buy the reads you want. Their unique read subscription service lets you mix and match individual reads of various brands and strengths, and they're shipped straight to your door every month. Shipping is always free, and you can change your subscription at any time. Read Revolution also offers the best prices on boxes of reads. For example, a box of Java Tenor reads is cheaper than on Amazon by nearly 10%, and you're supporting a small business. Use code SACSPY to save an additional 10% on your order, and click the link in the description to join the Read Revolution. Now, back to the video. I have a really favorable opinion of 20 approach note etudes. You get to see how the approach notes and enclosures work in a real strict sense. And if you want to branch out, you can get some of Chad's transcription books. Now the language that Chad improvises with is the same language that he uses to write in here. Another thing I really like about this book is the melodic ideas and the repetition that it uses. A lot of figures are repeated uh, and they're changed up every time. So you have to watch. It's usually just a note or two. For example, sometimes you might see G, F sharp, F, E flat to E, whereas another time you might see G approaching to E flat, and there's just gonna be one chromatic note difference there, but it changes the whole pattern and makes it fit in. And seeing little things like that are what actually make this book really valuable to me. Of course, I really appreciate the engraving style. The only thing is I wish it didn't use key signatures, which isn't a deal breaker, but with a lot of the harmonic shifting that happens in this style of music, I think they tend to be better without key signatures. I originally bought these as PDFs. They don't come in a physical format. I would actually recommend the iPad version over printing them off. And I'm using an app called Fourscore, and the iPad still has a really weird storage system. Uh, it's not super intuitive and it doesn't always sync well, but if you have a tablet of some sort, see if you can get Fourscore or another PDF uh, reader app where you can write and draw on it and take notes. Uh, I think that really is the way to go. Another tiny thing that I think needs to be fixed, and this actually applies to most PDF books that I have, and if you're doing one in the future, take this into consideration, put the artist name in the file name first. No one's going to remember 79 chromatically altered pop progression riffs. They're going to look for Nancy's newest book. Nancy's the name of my saxophone, by the way. So that's what I like to see. I have tons of PDF books. Half of them are numbers, half of them are concepts. They all sound the same. I'm not going to remember the names. So put the artist name first, and that's going to be more helpful to people who want to find that book. So I reached out to a lot of my followers to ask which of you have bought this book and what you thought about it. And I wanted to share some of those opinions with you. At Will Meads Jazz says, the book is a great tool for really making the player realize the foundational beats of four to one in the progression and seeing how enclosures and approach notes can help bridge the gap between chords in a progression. And I think that's really valuable. He says he can tell uh, if someone is a professional or not based on how they resolve four to one. So you know that's gonna be really strong in these books. At nspangler98 says, I think that they are very good for helping with the flow of improvisation. I'm also finding that if time is taken to break down the phrases in the solos, a lot can be learned about the theory, which is helping me create ideas of my own. And ultimately that's the goal, right? To create ideas of your own. So I'm really glad to hear that that's working for you. At Marino Garcia Martin Music, I think this is great material. Also to write after your own etudes on other standards. Also I copied the blues etude and transposed it to 12 keys with Sibelius. That's actually a really good suggestion. So uh, once you learn some of these, maybe transpose them into different keys, especially you know blues, rhythm changes, Cherokee, ones that we're learning in 12 keys to begin with. And then write some of your own etudes, uh, which is actually the origin of these. Really great advice there Marino. So which books have you found most helpful in finding your own voice? Like this video, leave a comment down below with your answer, and subscribe so that you catch all of my future videos. And as always, keep an eye out for all things Vinti and Minty.